Are you struggling with a difficult decision? If so, here are some ideas that may help you. Hello friends, Pastor Tim Westermeyer here. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. In our most recent episode about Augustine, I concluded by reminding us that one of the lessons from Augustine's life is to respond to God's call in our own lives. And I got a response from that video from someone who was sitting with an important decision in his life. And so I thought for today's episode, I would um, lift up a chapter or part of a chapter from a book I've recommended many times. I think we've talked about it here before. It's called The Jesuit Guide to Almost Everything, A Spirituality for Real Life by Father James Martin, who is a Jesuit, someone in the Ignatian tradition, St. Ignatius of Loyola. I would commend this whole book to you. You don't have to be um, Catholic. You don't have to be Lutheran. You don't have to even be Christian. I I think it's filled with great wisdom. And one particular chapter uh, is a chapter I've commended to many people over the years who are sitting with an important decision. Do I go right? right? Or do I go left? Uh, That chapter is simply called, What Should I Do? And it's a longish chapter. I'm certainly not going to try to summarize the entire thing, but I want to lift up a couple of uh, ways forward when you are faced with a decision based on this chapter um, and lift up a couple of other points uh, from it as well. And what I want to start with is a a word that's critical in Father Martin's mind and also in the Ignatian tradition, uh, which is when you are faced with a decision, uh, you should adopt a posture of indifference, which sounds like it's a negative thing, but what they're really, what Ignatius is saying um, is, is you should adopt a a posture of freedom. Uh, What Ignatius meant by indifference, Father Martin writes, was freedom. The freedom to approach each decision afresh. The ability to be detached from one's initial biases and step back. The willingness to carefully balance the alternatives. An openness to the working of God in one's life. Uh, Another person he quotes says uh, that indifferent means undetermined to one thing or option rather than another, impartial, unbiased, with decisions suspended until the reasons for a wise choice are learned and still undecided. And now things are falling out of the book. Anyway, there's a sense of not being committed to a decision before you're ready to decide. So holding sort of the options lightly might be another way of saying it. Not holding on to one or the other, but allowing the process of figuring out which way to go uh, to play itself out. So again, I want to lift up um, a couple of processes, I guess, uh, if you're faced with a difficult, challenging decision. And the most difficult decisions for us in our life typically are when we have uh, two or more apparently good options, right? If there is a decision we have to make between one option that's really good and one that's clearly not good, there's not much of a decision to be made. But if we have multiple options available to us, that's when it can become really tricky. So again, I want to lift up two sort of processes here based on the Ignatian tradition here um, that may be helpful for you if you are faced with a decision. So in the first method, uh, Father Martin says, this method is based more on reason. And there are six quick steps which we'll move through rapidly. First, put Put yourself in prayer or put the decision uh, before you in prayer. Just lay it out there in prayer before God. That's the first thing. Second, identify your ultimate objective, which, by the way, for Ignatius, is the desire to please God as well as the need, again, to be indifferent, right? So, again, reminding yourself, I want to be open uh, as as full as I can to all the options available to me as I begin this process. Third, Ask God for help to move your heart towards the better decision. And then fourth, this is the one that's sort of the most practical, I guess. Make a list. This maybe doesn't sound all that surprising or shocking, but make a list either in your head or on paper of the possible and negative outcomes of the first option and then do the same for the second option. And if there are three or four options, do it for all of them. Fifth, now that you have your lists, again, we go back to praying. Pray about them and see which way your reason inclines. 
Eventually, Father Martin writes, you will come to a choice that brings some peace. So that's the fifth step. And then the final step, the sixth step, is to ask for some sort of confirmation from God that this is the right or correct decision. Now, it's interesting. Importantly, uh, Father Martin quotes someone else that says, we should be satisfied with whatever confirmation we receive, even if it's simple. And then he quotes again someone else who says, this may in the end be simply the negative confirmation that nothing comes up to call our decision into question, if that makes sense, okay? So again, that's the first method, uh, one through six. Uh, Relatively straightforward, Um, again, based largely on reason, but a lot of time in prayer, sitting with it, uh, creating lists and so forth. The second method, uh, Father Martin suggests, relies less on reason and more on imagination. And this one only has, I guess, three or four different uh, steps or ways of imagining, right? So first, he suggests, imagine a person whom I've never seen or known and imagine what advice you would give that person in your situation. I think this is a really uh, clever as to sort of minimizing. I think it's a very sophisticated way of thinking about the decision facing you because if you are offering advice to someone else in that situation, it sort of removes you from it and allows you to be a little more objective. So again, imagine someone in your situation with the choices and imagine what you would say to that person. What advice or counsel would you give them? Second, uh, and this sounds a little morbid, But imagine yourself at the point of death, looking back on that decision that you are faced with. Does that give you a sense of perspective, perhaps, and a sense of, oh, when I'm faced with ultimate things, now that looking back, the choice I'm faced with now comes into greater clarity. Related to that, the third thing, imagine ourselves at the last judgment. This, of course, is a particularly Christian instinct. But imagine yourself facing God Um, And what does God or what does Jesus have to say to you about the decision that you would have made now in the past? And does that again provide some clarity? And then finally, and this is James Martin's own addition, imagine what your best self would do. You know, allow yourself to imagine, okay, who am I really being called to be here? And if I could live out that in, in in the fullness of who God wants me to be, Does that help me understand the decision I'm about to make? We can get very, that's the end of that second method, we can get very wrapped up and sort of frozen, I think, with uh, moments in our lives when we have to make difficult decisions. But I love what he says at the end of the chapter, um, which is, I'll read a couple of final thoughts here. When we accept that all our choices, all of them, in this life, when we accept that all our choices are conditional, limited and imperfect. All of them are imperfect. We will never make the perfect decision. Our lives, Father Martin says, become paradoxically more satisfying, more joyful, and more peaceful. And I think he's right about that. When we realize that uh, making these decisions are never going to be fully perfect, it gives us a little more freedom to recognize, okay, we're going to be okay. Um, which is why, in the end, the last sentence of the sentence, he says, most of all, trust that God is with you as you choose your paths in this life. And I do believe that that's true. Whatever decision you're faced with, whichever direction you go, remember, above all, that God will travel with you and still love you. Thanks, as always, for being with me. Be well, stay in touch, and God bless. 